another one. So somebody asked me in a comment, do you have an example of an identity and access management project? <clears throat> and that comment was from, for some, I, I really don't know why. I don't know why, but my top video on the channel is the, the identity and access management engineer video. Why? I don't know, but hey, I'm not fighting it, right? But they asked, do you have an example of an identity and access management project? So I saw our clock on this one. And I, I so I I had an idea in mind for identity and access management project. I didn't know I, I didn't know how doable it was. So I did some research online and um, you know, I for you know what I always do, I, I Google it. You see me Google all the time. And I search for example identity and access management projects. Not too many came up, but one of them that came up, which uh which I posted in the comment of that video, was um Pretty much, you'd go to your desired platform of choice, whether it's a Microsoft Azure, whether it's Google Cloud Platform, whether it's AWS, and you would <clears throat> you would start to create users and stuff like that, create policies, all that good stuff, and you would uh, you would set up the like you know map out your your policies. So approach it as an identity access management engineer and map out your policies, who gets access to what. So my thought was behind this, this is what, this is what I was thinking when I, when, I was, when I was thinking about this, which is pretty much what they were outlining in the tutorial slash video. Is, all right, so my idea is you are, you, remember what we talked about gamifying your workflow? So you're going to have to gamify it. You say, okay, I just got hired for a company where I am doing the identity and access management. And this company, Give it a name. I don't know. Let's say uh, the coolest company in the world. I don't know. Whatever. Or make it a real company. Say, oh, I just got hired by, by Tesla, for instance, right? <clears throat> and I have to, I have like the accounting department. I have the software engineering department. I have the QA department. I have the, uh, the marketing department. I have the C-level department. I don't know. The, the customer support department. Whatever. And let's say, so let's say you have a total of like five departments and you have four employees for each department. So that means you have to create 20 users and you're going to have to assign them to a, to a um, department. And now you configure the permissions for that department. And a good idea is also to start with zero trust architecture that we spoke about. So saying, all right, what is like, Nobody has any, any rights. No company has, like, or no departments have any rights. And now, what rights do these, do these departments need? What rights do these individual people need? Because a, a junior developer isn't going to have the same rights as the, as the manager or the CTO or stuff like that. Maybe you have a tier saying, all right, um, there's, there's, the engineer, there's the policy for the engineering department where they all have these least amount of rights that say read rights. And then you have the, you have the, the managerial tier where they have maybe right access. I don't know. And that way for the managers, they would get the, who are in engineering, they would get the engineering rights as well as the, the, um, the manager rights. And then the other ones, like the, the regular um, software devs, you know, junior devs, regular devs, they would get the whatever it is for the um, whatever it is for the the engineering rights. And then you do that for the for the like for the other departments as well. Um, and then you can also say, all right, which might take some extra knowledge on knowing like the different parts of AWS, but say, okay, what can they access on AWS? Saying, all right, this user can access here that user can access here. You know, just figure that out. Like, it's going it's to take some research. It's going to be hard, but it's going to be very, very worth it. It's going to be very worth it. And to me, that, that is one strategy that I would employ. And then you have to do that for all the, all the teams, all the departments. You have, maybe you have to create some, some levels. You know, a level of like the, a hierarchy of like um, the, the manager level, like I was saying, that the manager hierarchy. But then there's departments as well. And that way you can practice it. Uh, it's, 
it's the closest that you can come to to um to doing it without actually having a um you know, working for a company. But another idea, real quick, is if you get onto a project with like let's say you get a five people project where you guys are building some type of application. Let's say you have a software developer, you have a QA person, you have a UI UX person, you have a um I don't know a marketing person, whatever, and you just create permissions for them in your AWS or whoever's AWS or Google Cloud Platform. And that way, you actually have real permission set where they can log in and they say, okay, you don't have access to this, you can have access to that. And then you have to test it. You have to test it by logging into these users to make sure that they have the adequate permissions that you set up for them. And the thing is, you don't even, you don't even really need to be using an uh, actual email address because you can set up users on your, on your, on your platforms with usernames and passwords, and you'd have all those usernames and passwords. And then a step up from that, after you can do that, then you Terraform it. That right there is what's going to make you stand out. Because if you, can, if you can figure out how to use Terraform to set up your users and your permissions and your policies and all of that, that is, so now we get into the realm of, of standing out. That first part is going to be the basic on learning how to set use, to do identity access management. Taking it to Terraform is what the companies are now looking for because infrastructure is code. Automating your workflow is what's going to help you level up and stand out at that point. So that is my example. You guys let me know what you guys think about it because like I said, I am not the most in-depth cybersecurity person, but I have used identity and access management um, You know, because I'm always in AWS. You guys see me use it. I'm creating users, creating permissions, all that good stuff. So that would be a, a way, a strategy that I would employ if I wanted to get a little bit more hands-on with identity and access management, all right? So that is that question. Scrolling through my phone, I can find a spark. He still feels like a bug in a broken arc. But my lines of code know me better than Conversations fizzle, hearts feel like a chore Bad dates come and go, but the code's always there Lines of love in the night, pulling me from despair These fleeting connections can't break through the strain I'm lost in these programs, I'm coding my pain So wrong, wondering if I can fix what's taking too long. But while dinner gets cold, my thoughts start to race. I'd rather be debugging in my own safe space. Is it me or the cold that keeps me awake? Bad dates come and go, but the cold's always there. Lines of love in the night pulling me from despair. start to race i'd rather be debugging in my own safe space is it me or the code that keeps me awake 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 bad dates come and go but the code's always there lines of love in the night pulling me from despair these fleeting connections can't break through the strain i'm lost in these programs i'm coding my pain so i lay down my heart